this is going to be an emotional and tough video. It's going to be a video we weren't ready to make. <laughs> we didn't want to make, but we kind of felt we had to, just to explain what happened. Uh, but we'll do our best to kind of talk through what happened, what's going on, and, you know, where we're at. It's very windy today. <laughs> it's very windy. It's kind of like my emotions. <laughs> um, so while Nate was in Portland last week, I was here with the animals, just getting into my normal routine of waking up, doing chores, um, taking care of the dogs, working, and then one of the things I'd really enjoyed was taking the dogs for walks and really just starting to explore the property. So even though Nate was gone, I was having a really nice week with the dogs and, you know, just really... Oops. <laughs> and with the animals and getting used to uh, appreciating all of the stuff that Nate does on a daily basis. And I think it was Sunday the 20th was one of my favorite days on the homestead. And I even posted on Instagram a picture of Floyd because I was so happy and he was snuggling next to me and it was just such a good day. And we went to bed, everyone was fine. I woke up Sunday. I'm sorry, woke up Monday, the 21st of November, and Floyd, as usual, wanted to go outside, go potty. It's his favorite thing to do, is first thing in the morning, he gets up and he wants to go outside really quick, and then he comes back in for his favorite thing, breakfast, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and his breakfast treat. And so, it was 8 a.m. Monday morning, I was getting up to do chores and um, do a couple things before I started work for the day. And I let the dogs outside to go to the bathroom, just as I always do. And I'm not sure why it caught my attention, because like I said, Floyd likes to go out and run and nothing out of the ordinary. And he took off running from the house down this path and it was, I was so happy and it was so cute because I was like, oh, he's chasing something. I wonder what it is, a bunny or a squirrel or a leaf or a figment of his imagination. I don't know, but he's chasing something. And then all of a sudden I saw something that was kind of strange and I just saw light brown on the ground and I didn't see Floyd anymore. And Winston was coming up behind Floyd and got to Floyd and looked to be playing. And I'm still looking out the window and I don't see Floyd. I just see what appears to be him laying on the ground and Winston coming back towards the house without Floyd. And so I went outside to go check and see what was going on. And I kind of briskly walked up and I'm looking, seeing that there's still what appears to be Floyd laying down, but I don't see movements of his tail. I don't see, I don't see anything. I just see, you know, him laying there. And as I <laughs> rounded the tree, I saw that he was just laying there completely still. And so I ran up to him and tried to, you know, wake him up, shake him, and he had no movements or anything, so the only thing I could think to do immediately was, it was, it was probably 24 degrees at this time, so it was very cold, and so I ran to go get a couple blankets, and I came back with some blankets, and I called Nate, <laughs> And mind you, he's in Oregon right now, so it's 5, 5.15, 5.30 his time. And I attempt to do CPR, but I'm also trying to let Nate know <laughs> that I think Floyd is no longer with us.
Dico Floyd. Quero que é I get the phone call at 5.30 in the morning from Katie and I just knew something was wrong. It was really early for her to be calling. Um, and I answer the phone and she's just crying on the phone. And it's 20 to 30 seconds before I can get her to tell me what's going on. And she tells me that Floyd died And that she's sitting there with him and doesn't, there's no way for her to move, cause, move him because he's 85 pounds. So, long story short, short is I called the neighbor asking for her help and she came down and we were trying to decide what to do and we really knew that it was going to be impossible for, for them to dig a grave for Floyd. Plus, we didn't know wh why. Right. Like, we didn't, yeah, what we didn't happened. know. We didn't know, and I and I I really wanted to know what happened because it was just so instant and so sudden. So I called the vet, and I arranged for Floyd to be taken up there to do a necropsy. And so Katie and the neighbor Rita loaded Floyd into the back of Rita's car. Rita's car and they drove him to the vet and we took him just so we could hopefully get some answers because Floyd was only six years old and he just he was he seemed so healthy like there there seemed to be nothing wrong other than the fact that he just <laughs> ate everything like <laughs> that's just Floyd yeah but other than that there were no symptoms no nothing that we knew of no. so and he didn't, he wasn't showing any symptoms in the morning that he had eaten something. He was excited. He was happy. He had snuggled with me all night in bed. He, you know, woke me up like, hey, mom, I need to go potty. <laughs> like he normally does. Yep. Nothing out of the ordinary. What? Whoa. Whoa. What is this? What is this? What? What? What do you want? Is it this? Is that what you wanted? Is that what you want, Floyd? Did you want some? Did you want a treat? Several hours later, the the vet that did the necropsy called me because he had my number and told me that Floyd's heart was enlarged. Uh, the left chamber, the wall of the left chamber was severely enlarged and hard and it was about an inch thick with really thick hard muscle and that the more than likely cause is that since his heart was not pumping enough blood because of its condition that he was uh, probably producing quite a bit of blood clots and one just went into his brain and he died from a blood clot. Did you want a treat? You sit. You sit. Nap, nap, nap. You wait. Gentle. Oh, is there still more? Oh. Oh, yeah, there's still more, huh? Did you need more? The <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Winston. The, uh, Knowing that it wasn't something that he suffered from, knowing that he died without any pain, he died instantly, and he died 
while he was in the middle of doing something he absolutely loved. He loved chasing after squirrels, bunnies, whatever. And also knowing that he lived a good life. He was loved beyond words. At least made it a little easier. I would say I'm still a bit in shock. Yeah. yeah. It hasn't even been a week yet. So we uh, knew that we had asked the vet to please hold him for us because it had been below freezing the entire week that Nate was gone and you know we don't have any heavy equipment and our neighbors that we know only have front loaders so we knew that it was going to be really difficult to dig a hole and we also knew that we did want to bury him here and so we asked the vet to hold on to him for us for a few more days so that we could one Nate could get home yeah. Because again, Nate was gone and he still had two more days. Two more full days before he was going to be flying back. And so, and he really wanted to be able to say goodbye as well. So, on Wednesday night, Nate got home. And on Thursday, we just decided to, since it was Thanksgiving and we had made plans with our friends we decided to get off the homestead and just to try to get our minds off of it a little bit. And then Friday we came home and rented a mini excavator and we dug a hole um, so that we could lay him in there. And then yesterday, Saturday, uh, we picked him up from the vet and drove him back home. One last car ride. <laughs> <laughs> and just, and we buried him. And we said our goodbyes. Well, we, and we let the dogs say goodbye. And we let the dogs. <laughs> because I think they were really confused. Because when it all happened on Monday, it just went from him passing and me being in shock to him leaving without you know and he just didn't come back and so we noticed that when we would go somewhere Winston would come up to the truck like looking for Floyd when we got back when we would come back and so it just kind of we, we knew they needed closure too so we wanted to make sure that they were able to to understand as much as they could, so we let the dog say goodbye as well, and then we we buried him. We buried him with uh, <laughs> some <laughs> some milk bones, some treats, some treats, and some of you may not know, but Floyd loved to eat things. He had four foreign object uh, removal surgeries. Removal surgeries. The first two being socks, and so Ethan gave him two socks to to lay with because he loves socks. <laughs> <laughs> Stinky boy socks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yep. and then we uh, we buried him, and we cleaned up the gravesite, spread wildflower seeds and planted tulip bulbs. So in the spring that we'll have a pretty area over here underneath some pine trees on the edge of the field. I had ordered a custom heads, well, it's like a plaque, like a memorial that we want to place here. I'm not big on, you know, super obvious graves or things like that, but wanted just to have a nice memory and so 
Or we can just put it on the screen. <laughs> Can I read it? Sure. So the the plaque will have a very beautiful picture of Floyd, and it'll read Floyd, January fourteenth, two thousand sixteen, to November twenty first, two thousand twenty two. And it says, <laughs> I don't know if I can get through this. If love alone could have kept you here, you would have lived forever. You brought us so much joy to our lives, smiles to our hearts, and laughter into our home. You were the goodest of the good boys and the bestest of the best boys. We love you, Bug Bug. Oh, man. So. so. <laughs> Katie and I are really trying to just make it through day to day, giving extra love to <laughs> Kinsley and Winston, and really trying to uh, just just remember the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just know that that boy was he was he, loved. <laughs> he was loved. He had the best dog life a dog could have and he brought us so much joy and happiness and we're trying to get used to the homestead without him because it's very different we've never known it without him it really has and it it really has uh changed the feel here he brought he brought he brought a magic he brought something really special and that's it's hard to have that not here anymore yeah. we're grateful that we have Kinsley and Winston and the other animals but it's it's still very hard and we're still in shock and grieving quite a bit so but we wanted to let you guys all know because it'll be very obvious as he's not in the photos and future videos. videos rather yeah. um, and also why we kind of <laughs> haven't posted in a while yeah we've just really it's been hard to pick up the camera yeah and record just trying to stay in our emotions and letting the process happen and grieve how we need to and remember and Well, that's it for this, and we'll be sure to show you how beautiful this area is when the wildflowers <laughs> and the tulips come in, yeah. and and the memorial plaque, and when everything's ready. But for now, we're just happy that we have our boy home, yeah. and and we can come visit him whenever we want to. And he's been definitely comforting us yes <laughs> so he's been helping me in my sleep because he was my little spoon <laughs> <laughs> almost every night for the last six years so and your couch buddy and my couch buddy <laughs> kinsley's trying to <laughs> trying to fill those shoes but they are giant shoes to fill <laughs> giant paws to fill yep so Okay. With that, that's kind of all we wanted to share. We knew this was going to be a hard one, so <laughs> we will. Uh, I don't know. We'll just we're just gonna process it as we need to process it and appreciate, um, you know, your thoughts and prayers 